Merry Christmas, Friedberg family, and welcome to our service of worship. Usually, I don't even want to think about Christmas until after Thanksgiving, but this year, I have been ready for a time of hope and celebration after this historic year we call 2020. It's always a joy to have you with us, whether you're joining us online or in person. And if you're in-house with us today, here's a few reminders for our service. Please remember to wear your mask for the duration of the service. Make sure you, that you and your family unit are at least six feet away from the next family unit. Use your smartphone to scan the QR code located on the back of the pew in front of you for all of today's worship resources. Links to Simple Give, and if you're worshiping with us for the first time today as a guest, we'd love to hear from you. Leave as much information as you'd like us to have, and someone will follow up with you this week. We'd like to extend a friendly reminder that if you join us for worship, cross kids activities, youth activities, any circle or group meeting or visit the campus throughout the week in accordance with state, local, and provincial guidelines, you must wear a mask inside the building whether you're able to socially distance or not. A change in the state mandate now requires that you wear a mask outdoors if you're unable to socially distance. This is a trying time for everyone, and we may not always agree with the requirements in place, but please respect your church family and wear your mask. That covers our pre-service safety reminders. Now let's get to the announcements and activities in the life and ministry of our church. The Cross Kids Christmas Party will begin at 4.30 this afternoon. Drop off and pick up will be at the Fellowship Hall instead of the Family Life Center. Families, mark your calendars for Saturday, December 19th from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. for Cross Kids Family Movie Matinee. Bring your own chair, blanket, inflatable mattress, or whatever you need to be comfortable and enjoy a family Christmas movie. Social distancing will be observed as well as all mask guidelines. Check Ms. Heidi's weekly email for all of the activities and events in the Cross Kids Ministry. It's a busy day for the FMC youth. Beginning at 2 p.m., the high school group will meet at Walmart to shop for 40 Christmas families. Parents plan to stick around, help shop, and transport those gifts back to the youth room. Next, the middle schoolers will wrap those gifts that are purchased in the youth room from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. The youth Christmas party will be December the 13th from 5.30 to 7 p.m. in the Family Life Center. This will be an ugly Christmas sweater event, so find the worst and look your best. Bring a new pair of clean socks along with a gift card inside for Dirty Santa. Next Sunday, December 13th, join us at 11 a.m. for a combined service. Our children's and youth ministries will be in the sanctuary, and we'd love to have as many in attendance as possible for the Christmas program, Won't You Be My Neighbor? If you regularly attend the 8.30 service, we will resume it on Sunday, December 20th. So join us next week for the Christmas program. The Senior Choir would like to thank everyone for the donations to the Forsyth Jail and Prison Ministry. They will keep that donation open through the end of the year, so remember to grab a few extra items while shopping over the next few weeks. They need full-size options in each of the following items. Bottles of shampoo, bars of soap, toothpaste, and large non-aerosol deodorants. They will also accept monetary donations, so go to Friedberg.Church, choose the Give tab, and select the General Account, and leave a comment noting that it's for the Forsyth Jail and Prison Toiletries or make a check payable to Friedberg Moravian with Forsyth Jail Toiletries in the memo line. The choir is also happy to pick up any donations if you're unable to make it to the church. The senior choir is selling keychain flashlights, 2021 calendars, and they still have those ink pens for sale, all for $5 and going to benefit the friends of the Moravian Prison Ministry. They make great stocking stuffers, so make sure you get yours to fill those stockings next month. Delivery options are available if you're unable to make it to the church. Friedberg is hosting its biannual blood drive this afternoon from 1230 to 5 p.m. in the Family Life Center. There may be slots left for you to give the gift of life, so swing by the FLC after worship to reserve your slot. Friedberg, mark those calendars for Friday and Saturday, December the 11th and 12th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. each night. 
Circle Four of the Women's Fellowship is sponsoring a blessing box donation and drive through nativity. Enter through the Family Life Center parking lot and stop by the blessing box to drop off your donation. You'll be able to tune in on your car radio and enjoy Christmas tunes while driving through the real story of Christmas. Make plans to join us for this special event next weekend. Last but not least, the communications team has received permission to convert an unused Sunday school room into a studio. This is a much needed space as our ministry has grown mainly out of necessity to include filming three to four videos a week in addition to special projects. The room that we've acquired is room 203 in the education building and is currently being used for miscellaneous storage by several groups. We would love your help with preparing the room for production by picking up those items that belong to your group by December 31st so we can possibly begin using the new space in the new year. For questions, please email the communication team at communications at friedberg.church. That covers our weekly announcements to keep up with all of the activities in the life of the church. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube page, and go to our website, www.freedberg.church. That wraps up our announcements this week, folks. Church, we love you. We've missed you. God bless you. Till next time, virtual hugs and handshakes, a friendly wave to those of you in the congregation today. Let's get ready to worship. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our service of worship on the second Sunday of Advent. As I mentioned last week, Advent is a four-week season of the church year during which we prepare our hearts and our lives for the celebration of the birth of Jesus at Christmas. Moments ago, our music director, Debbie Foltz, played two beautiful carols of Christmas, the very familiar Away in a Manger, and the more somber, haunting sounds of the Coventry Carol, a carol that... Uh, speaks of a, of a biblical event that took place. You can read about it in Matthew, but I'm going to be preaching on that in a few weeks. And, and Debbie, just save that because I want to, to call attention back to that 
that carol. It is a beautiful, beautiful, powerful song. But in a few moments, we're going to light our Advent wreath. That's actually why I'm up here. So Pastor Dan, who's going to light the wreath, he and I can be socially distant. But before, just want to uh, reiterate a couple things Daniel said. Just a welcome to everyone who is worshiping with us here in the sanctuary and for those who are participating in worship online. We are so very glad that you have joined us. And you are always welcome to worship with us uh, in person if you can. We do that at 8.30 and 11, 8.30 over in the... The Family Life Center, 11, obviously, as you're here. And then online, the live stream is at 11. And then folks can also see that anytime during the week if they go to our YouTube channel. Now, next Sunday is the children and youth of our church presenting uh, this year's Christmas program. It is an annual event to which uh, I and, and I imagine almost all of us look forward to with great joy. It'll be at 11 o'clock here in our sanctuary. And uh, as, as I've said before, you know, a lot of people will say that the children, that the youth, they're the future of the church. And, and they are. But I also believe that our children and youth have something to say to us today. And so each time they, that the children and youth present a program, whether they're singing, doing the Christmas program, uh, Youth Sunday, or the Children's Love Feast, the Children's Awakening Love Feast that we do in August, they always have something powerful to say to us. And so what we hear from them next Sunday, I know, will be a blessing. Now, because of the uh, Christmas program, we will not be having the 8.30 worship service in the Family Life Center. That's just for next Sunday. Um, there's some live parts that uh, we can't do over there and here, so we're just doing the 11 o'clock service here, and it'll be the children's program, most of which is pre-recorded, but there are some live portions as well. And we encourage you to participate either here with us or online. There are two items uh, available still for you. There are copies of a music CD that was done by Alan Denny a few years ago. Alan, many of you know him. Uh, sadly, Alan passed away from cancer in January of 2013, but a gifted musician, loved the Lord, uh, an integral part of the praise band here at Friedberg. And these songs are carols of Christmas, everything from O Come All Ye Faithful to Silent Night. And uh, the family, Alan's family, has made these available to us for free. And so there are some in the vestibule. And if you want one, you can take it. If you'd like to take one to share with other folks, uh, you'll hear Alan playing beautifully on that CD. And we do have three copies left uh, today of the little booklet, How Do I Deal with Anxiety and Fear? And the one I'm holding, I'm going to put down there later, but there's two on the communion table, and I'm going to order some more. But if you uh, feel like that's a book that would be helpful to you, I've certainly found it helpful. It's very biblically based, and you can take it for yourself or take it and share it with someone else. And again, that's uh, completely uh, free to you, part of our ministry and we hope that you will use it and it will be a blessing for you or whoever you share it with. All right, Brother Dan. Um, if you would, on the sheet that you received, or it might be up on the screen even, are the words that we're going to have for the lighting of our Advent wreath. And Dan will light it as we go through this. And you'll have the line that's in dark print uh, as a response. Last Sunday, we lit the candle of hope, remembering the hope which comes in Christ. Today we light the second candle of the Advent wreath, the candle of peace. God gave the prophet Isaiah a vision of the peaceable kingdom, a dream of the world finally and fully at peace, a world in which wolves and lambs live together, leopards lie down with baby goats, calves and yearlings live safely with lions, and a little child leads them all. We dream of such a world, too, a world where people of all nations live in harmony, where war is no more, and we eat together at one table, while we await the coming of Christ's heavenly kingdom, as his disciples let us dream and struggle and strive together to create a semblance of that kingdom here on earth. We light this candle in peace. On this day, we remember the Lord of all, who gives us the peace 
that surpasses all understanding. And now those who are able, let us stand as we sing our opening hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. This time, uh, we're going to have a video recording of Miss Heidi uh, doing the children's sermon.
and trying to just get ready for the season. And, you know, we got to be prepared for things, and you know, we're we're prepared with our mask on, mm -hmm. and we 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 got our oh, we really prepared because we got our straps here. I just pulled mine, and you know, you talked about shopping online, and that got me thinking because look at look at my presents. I've got them all prepared and ready to go. And how are you ready? You're getting tired. I know. I have them prepared. Look, I got my Christmas tree up with the lights. You know, I, there is one thing that I'm not prepared with, and that's that. Let me show you. I got, I got some decorations here. <laughs> and Sherry, you know what? I'm not prepared with this one because Mr. Daniel's not home from the fire station yet, and so he's got to help me get prepared for that one. But you know, that's okay. I'll, I'll work on that one later. He'll help me get prepared for yeah, that. Yeah, you need to get prepared for that, Heidi. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, that's all right. No problem. You know, I'm prepared with my gifts. I'm prepared with this, and um, I got my friend here. And my, I'm prepared with my friends, and um, there's some other things. Oh, at Christmas time, do you know what I like to do at Christmas for my friends? I like to bake. Oh, do you like to bake? I do. I like to prepare so, with that. Yeah. Yeah. I do. So when we prepare with that, we've got to prepare with with ingredients. So I've got my baking pan here, and I've got my, my my Crisco stick and I've got my bacon chips and the best way to prepare these desserts because of course you know I've got to bake my desserts. Let's prepare them with some sprinkles. Mm -hmm. Got my red and green sprinkles here. Do you like to prepare things like I that? I do and when I'm when I'm baking I get all my stuff out so I am prepared to do it right when I get ready to start my baking. Yeah so gotta be prepared but oh you know when I prepare things you know I, I like to to listen to music yes and so I'm prepared I got my special CD here and my, my special friend mr. Allen Allen wrote these here and so I prepare my mind when I do that there so yeah oh and so this, this made me think because it has some really pretty lights here you yeah. see those yeah it does lights? yeah music prepares my mind too yeah it yeah. does it's so the, the other thing I have here look at this I'm prepared for this it's been a year. It has, yeah. yes, but if you're, you're preparing for loafies. I'm preparing for loafies, yeah. Might look a little different this year, but I'm so prepared for Man, I'm super Wait a second. I am prepared. Just about fell off my head here, but I'm I'm prepared for, for Santa, and I've got, got Rudolph Freddy. Man, I'm prepared. I, I think I'm completely prepared for this season. It's tis the, tis the season. I, I'm about I'm, high. Yeah, Are you? Sure? Really prepared for what's coming. Am I pre really prepared to get tree Santa Rudolph? My decorations, baking candles, mu music. Wait a minute! I think I, I think did forget. Are you really me. prepared? Am I really prepared? I think I forgot something. You know, I think the candle is something that I. A little bit of a reminder, and I, I think I see something in your hand that really should be the big reminder. That's the Bible, isn't it, Miss Sherry? Mm, yes, it is, Heidi. And I, I think the candle should remind me about a light. And and in the love feast, we talk about Jesus is that light, and it should be the the way that we should go. And the Bible is the way that teaches us. And that's what Christmas is about. And, and Christmas is about Jesus coming and being born. And you know what? He prepares that way for us. And we should prepare ourselves just like the Bible prepares us. Hmm. Are we ready? It's not necessarily that we're ready with the gifts and the tree and the decorations and the baking and even the music. Maybe those help us. But are we really ready? Are we ready for Jesus? Hmm. Let's get ourselves ready for the birth of Jesus, for the way he lived, for the way we should live. Let's, let's be ready for Christmas. For really, tis the season. Can we do that? I think we can. Let's talk to God, all right? Oh, Jesus, thank you so much. Thank you for 
for being born. Thank you for, for the small reminders of a tree and the gifts and the music and the baking and the decorations, Lord. I, I thank you for those because it is a small celebration, but the big celebration and the, the big thing that, that we do get to celebrate is you. It's, it's your coming and, and your way of living. Lord, thank you. Lord, help us to prepare our hearts and our minds and Lord, our way of life for you. Lord, be with us each and every day. For it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. We'll see you next time. For those of you who may not know, the other person in that video is our church secretary, Sherry Phillips. She's sitting in the back right there. How do you like seeing yourself on camera? I didn't like it either last week, so, you know. But you got to do what you got to do. You did a great job. Thank you, Sherry, and Heidi, you did too. I want to call your attention to joys and concerns in the life of our congregation. We do rejoice in the beautiful decorations that uh, grace the inside and outside of our buildings this year. Uh, the poinsettias here in the sanctuary are given by Gail and Kenneth Kettner in memory of Jack Q. Cockrum and Ann Cockrum. Uh, the poinsettias in the narthex and then over in the lobby of the Family Life Center are given by our Women's Fellowship. The Christmas tree here in the sanctuary uh, is given by Homer and Bonnie Sides, as well as the wreaths that are on our outside doors. And the Advent wreath here is given in memory of Hal E. Essek, and the candles that are in our windows here in the sanctuary are given by Annie Rao and her family in memory of Ralph Rao. I do want to uh, rejoice Melissa. Glad that you're here. She had spent some time in the hospital, but she's here worshiping with us today. And God bless you. It's glad to have you back. Um, and Vince Young, he had successful surgery um, at Novant Health for Scythe, and he is now back home continuing his recovery. Nancy Thomas spent several days in Novant for Scythe receiving antibiotics and IV fluids to overcome an infection and some dehydration, and she is now back at uh, Bermuda Village Assisted Living. Yvonne Lemons is at home recovering from pneumonia. John Lindley will have cataract surgery tomorrow. Um, Gloria Peters will undergo surgery on Tuesday, December 8th uh, to remove a mass from the ring finger of her left hand. Um, I'm going to be having a procedure this Friday, some more injections in my lower back, and would appreciate your prayers. And Danielle Leonard, she's here with us today. She is going to be having some surgery on December the 14th, and we pray that all goes well with that. We want to pray for wisdom and discernment for the leaders and citizens of our nation as we continue to deal with COVID-19, the economic concerns, presidential election, uh, congressional leadership, political divisions, and all that we've been dealing with in 2020. Remember also the people of Nicaragua and Honduras as they continue to, to struggle uh, to recover from the devastation brought by hurricanes Ada and Iota. Um, for latest information on the recovery efforts, uh, you can go to the Board of World Mission website, which is moravian.org forward slash mission. We do encourage your prayers and financial support for Honduras and Nicaragua. And if you'd like to make a financial gift, you can do that at the website. Just same address I just gave you, Board of World, uh, I mean, moravian.org forward slash missions forward slash give. Uh, you can also write a check to the Border World Mission. Just make sure that you indicate Moravian Disaster Relief. Or if you would like to, you can make that check out to Friedberg, but also indicate Moravian Disaster Response, and we'll make sure that that gets to the Border World Mission. Some of you may have seen in the paper already uh, the news that Forsyth Correctional Center has 100 COVID cases there, 94 of the inmates and six of the staff people. Uh, that facility is the one that we have been collecting items for, for the pre prison ministry, and it's also where in a normal year, the choir and some of the volunteers of our church would have gone and had a love feast with the inmates over there. So let's remember them in our prayers. Um, and since I was just talking about giving, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap that uh, in as part of uh, our prayer concerns. Um, 
We do thank you for your tithes and offerings that you've been giving to Friedberg. And with just three Sundays remaining in 2020, it's uh, interesting. There were, there were days this year when I thought 2020 would never end. And now we have just three Sundays left in this year. And we encourage you uh, to remember the church and your end of year giving. And we do thank you for your giving throughout the year. And uh, all the ways in which you can give are on our church website, text giving, um, electronic giving, or by check or cash as well. But we want to lift up all these prayer concerns, so let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you and we exalt your holy name. You are worthy of all glory, honor, thanks, and praise. For in your great love you have created all things, us included. In your great love you have redeemed us from sin and death through the life, sufferings, death, and resurrection of your Holy Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In your great love you have provided us with the gift of the Holy Spirit to be our teacher, guide, and comforter throughout our life's journey. And in your great love you have prepared a glorious place where we will dwell with you for all eternity when our earthly journey of life comes to an end. Because you have done all of these things and even more, we know that we can trust you with our every need and every concern, whether it's a name printed on our prayer list, a concern that has been spoken aloud, or Lord, ones that we just hold silently in our heart this day, we lift them all up to you, but specifically we would pray for Melissa Davis, giving thanks that she's out of the hospital and back with us. We pray for Vince Young, rejoicing in the success of his procedure and praying for steady healing in the days to come. We pray that for Nancy Thomas as well, rejoicing that she's out of the hospital. We pray for Yvonne Lemons, help her body continue to fight off the pneumonia and enable her to gain strength day by day. We pray for the success of the upcoming surgeries of John Lindley, Gloria Peters, Danielle Leonard, and I would pray for success for the injections I'll be receiving this week as well. Lord, we lift up to you all those who are involved um, and in place at the Correctional Center. We miss going this year so very, very much, and now it weighs on our hearts to hear that that the inmates and even some of the staff members have, have come down with COVID-19. And we pray for safety for them, Lord, and for healing in the coming days. Restore all of them to health and draw them ever closer to you. We pray for the people and the leaders of Nicaragua and Honduras and for those who have gone to help them begin the work of recovery from those devastating storms. Lord, move people with compassion to go if and when they can. But if they can't go, Lord, to send money ahead so that those who are there, who are doing work and have the supplies that they need so that people can be fed, so that homes can be built, so lives can be restored. We ask for wisdom and discernment for the leaders and citizens of our nation as we respond to COVID-19 and economic hardships and election concerns and political and social divisions in our land. Lord, we pray, we ask earnestly that you would respond to each need and concern in accordance with your great love and the plans and purposes you have for us and for all the people of your world. All these things we pray in the holy and precious name of Jesus, the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
This time we're going to turn our attention to God's holy word. Be two passages of scripture that we're reading today. First from Isaiah chapter 40 and then from Mark verses uh, Mark chapter 1 verses 1 to 8. But before we read the holy scripture, let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, give us ears to hear what you would say to us today through these words of holy scripture. And then through Pastor Dan, as he, guided by the Holy Spirit, proclaims your word of truth, rightly dividing it, and helping prepare the way of the Lord in our hearts and lives. We thank you, Lord Jesus, and pray in your name. Amen. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 to 11. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, and that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged place is a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all mankind together will see it, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I say, what shall I cry? All men are like grass, and their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall. Because the breath of the Lord blows on them, surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. You who bring good tidings to Zion, go up to a high mountain. You who bring good tidings to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power, and his arm rules for him. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. And turning to the Gospel of Mark, Mark chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. The beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John came, baptizing in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thong of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And now Brother Joe Bowles will sing the beautiful piece, Joseph's Lullaby.
Thanks, Joe and Debbie. That um, has always been one of my favorite songs. It it makes you wonder if you were the parent, if you were the earthly parent of Jesus, what would you think? What would you do? Um, so, thanks. Usually I have a prayer, but Jimmy had a prayer, so we'll just go straight into the... Um, to the sermon here. You you may have been able to tell the theme of this morning's uh, worship service by listening to the various parts of the service. I mean, Heidi talked about preparation during the children's sermon. Then the Advent wreath and the opening hymn talked about the coming of the Christ child. The scripture readings talked about preparation. The title of the sermon is Prepare the Way of the Lord. And our closing hymn, Joy to the World, It has a phrase in it where it says, let every heart prepare him room. So if you guess that the theme this morning is preparation, you're right. And you win the prize, whatever, go home and have a cookie or something um, as your prize. But um, as you know, we've been in a season of preparation. The last five to six weeks of the year is all about kind of being prepared and uh, from Thanksgiving through the Advent season and on through Christmas Day and New Year's Day, we are in a state of being prepared, being prepared, or lamenting that we weren't prepared. And I mean, just think of some of the things that that we have to prepare for. It all started out with Thanksgiving. We had to prepare for the food that we're going to eat. We had to prepare how we were going to give thanks and pay it forward by either donating or volunteering at various ministries. We had to prepare to attend the Wednesday night evening Thanksgiving service. And then the five days following Thanksgiving take a lot of preparation too. The first day, the Friday, that is Black Friday, and we need to prepare where we're going to go, what we're going to buy, where we're going to, which stores, and how, and all all that. Then Saturday is Small Business Saturday, and we have to prepare ourselves to see which small businesses we're going to support. Then Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent and the kickoff to the Advent season. Monday is known as Cyber Monday and citizens of the U.S., get this, spent $10.8 billion, that's with a B, billion dollars that day on Cyber Monday. And, and we need to prepare what we're going to buy and all that. And then Tuesday is known as Giving Tuesday the day that many ministries and parachurch organizations rely on to help them meet their budget for the year. And I'm sure I've forgotten some, but there's others. All during the season of Advent, we need to prepare by, by decorating our house and decorating our church, and it does look beautiful, and we thank you for that. We prepare and plan for what kind and how many gifts we're going to be giving this season We also prepare for any family and friend get-togethers that we'll either be hosting or going to. Now, that might change a little bit with the season with COVID, but generally we do that. We have to prepare for Christmas Eve, too. What are the plans for your family? How many places are you going to have to go? Are there 10 or 12 or 2 or 3? Where will you go? What time will you go? How long will you stay there? What are we going to eat, and when are we going to eat during that day? Are we going to go to the Christmas Eve love feast and candle service, and do we open up our gifts on Christmas Eve, or do we do that on Christmas Day? We have to prepare for all that. So we also have to prepare for New Year's Day. Hopefully we'll reflect on our life this past year, the blessings that God has bestowed on us, along with those places and things that we could have or should have changed. Hopefully we'll do some strategizing to prepare us for this coming new year. And I also hope that you will prepare yourselves for worship, worshiping our Savior and Lord during, as we usher in this new year. So there's lots of preparation during these last five or six weeks of the year. Our two scripture passages that Jimmy read this morning are often used as readings for the Advent season, and more, more than likely they're used for the second Sunday of Advent, which is today. And because those scripture readings are used for Advent, many Christians associate the theme of preparing for the Lord 
that these two scriptures kind of bring forth, they speak of. And, as, and they think of those two scripture passages as a mandate to prepare for a baby that's going to be born in a manger. And many Christians assume that that preparation that is asked for is something to do with getting ready for the coming of the Christ child by, quote, quote, getting in the Christmas spirit. But I wonder, is that what was the real intent of Isaiah and John the Baptist and Mark in the readings that we read, that we heard? I don't think so. In fact, I know not. I know so that it's not. Um, so let's take a look a little bit more closely at preparing the way and what it meant for Isaiah and what it meant for John the Baptist and Mark. So let's first take a look at the Isaiah passage. The specific verses we're looking at are verses 3 and 4. Let me read those, those again. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness. And I'm, I'm doing it from the King James Version. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. Now, every time I read that scripture passage, I can't help but in my mind hear Handel's Messiah. We heard that all the time during this season. My dad loved uh, Handel's Messiah. But you know, this passage from Isaiah is not about some classical music by Handel played during the weeks before Christmas. Those verses in, in chapter 40 of the book of Isaiah actually center on the exile of the nation of Israel into Babylon. The prophet Isaiah is proclaiming God's words of comfort to the people of Israel. The promise that God will surely deliver them from the hand of the Babylonians and that he will also deliver them from the exile that they are experiencing. And to prepare for that day, when God would do that, the people were to prepare the way of the Lord. They were to make straight in the wilderness a highway. They were, the valleys would be raised up, the mountains be low, the rough ground would be smooth, and the rough places plain. Now that might sound kind of funny to us, and why would you do that? But actually that was referring to the ancient practice of when a monarch, a king, would go and visit, would make a trip somewhere. When the king was visiting, they, going to visit, they would send out a party in advance to scout the way. And they would make straight that which was crooked. They would level up the valleys and they would bring down the mountains. The rough places would be made smooth, and they did that. They literally had to make bridges. They had to find places that they could ford over a stream that wasn't up to their waist or up to their neck. And they would construct causeways over valleys or just fill in the valley, whichever was easiest. And it was all done so that this way for the king would be suitable what could be suitable for a, a, a king. And, and it was to announce that the king, who was someone powerful and important, was coming. In the Isaiah passage, the idea is that God is coming. He's coming to his people and going to redeem them from the exile. He's going to redeem them from, from that, and they, both God and the people, would return to Jerusalem, that holy city. But in order to do that, some preparations needed to be made. A highway was to be made. But instead of the highway being made for some earthly king, this highway was being made for God Almighty. Now, the Israelites obviously couldn't build a highway. They were in exile. But this declaration through Isaiah from God did a couple of things for the people of Israel. It gave them hope that God would be their God, a realization that, that he hadn't abandoned them because a lot of them thought that he had. It also reminded him that he would return with them to their homeland, to the holy city of Jerusalem. And it made them realize that they had a part in this return. They had to do a part, and it was to prepare. But it also gave them a future message one that none of them were able to, to live, but in the future, 
God promised a Messiah that would come and that the glory of the Lord would be revealed. The main point in the Isaiah passage is that God is doing something. His people had been punished through exile, but they were going to be redeemed through God's powerful, mighty, and holy hand. The emphasis is not on the people returning. The emphasis was that God is doing something great here. He is going to free his people, and he is going to return with them to the holy city of Jerusalem. And in that return the people of the world will see the fulfillment of the proclamation in verse 5. Verse 5, the part of it reads, the glory of the Lord will be revealed. Now, what does that mean? The glory of the Lord will be revealed. Well, in very much a real sense, this was God's victory march. It was a demonstration of his power. Many at that point thought that the God of the Israelites had, had more or less been neutered that he was powerless to do anything. The God of, of the Babylonians had come to Jerusalem and had defeated God's people, left Jerusalem in ruins, and then took exiles back to Babylon and left the nation in poverty. And so, so people thought that the God of the Israelites, like I said, had been neutered, and that the other gods of other nations were more powerful than him, and God was done. But this march back to Jerusalem was going to be God's victory march. It was going to show the people that he was in charge, that he had a plan. Even though it may not have seemed like it, God still knew what he was doing and was in charge. This march showed that he had defeated the Babylonians, proving that no other God all throughout the world had power over him, even though it may seem like that for a year or two or whatever. It also showed God's omnipotence. He seemingly makes what is impossible take place. Here's this powerful army, this powerful nation of Babylon, who destroyed Israel, took them away from exile. Their God has been neutered. And now what? How, how is he going to do anything? Well, it was an impossible situation, at least in the eyes of the people. But in this, what God is doing here in, in Isaiah... He proves that he is omnipotent. So the whole idea of being prepared in the Isaiah passage is not necessarily a personal preparedness. It's a preparation for the coming of God Almighty in a demonstration of his power and his might, freeing and restoring his chosen nation. With a, a shout out to the future, about a coming Messiah that they were to prepare for. So that's Isaiah. Now, let's look at, at Mark what's, and see what's going on here. The specific passage we're looking at at Mark are verses 2 and 3. And let me read them for you again. As it is written in the prophets, that was the prophet Isaiah, the book that Jimmy read. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. And then this specific quote, that we read before from Isaiah. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight, make his paths straight. Now while the Isaiah passage was referring to God's victory march back to Jerusalem, in the Mark passage, the way of the Lord refers to the triumphal way that Jesus is going to lead his people. God coming to earth was a total earth-shattering viewpoint. The, message, the, the idea that God would come and teach his children and be present and talk and eat and all that was just a totally new idea. So someone had to come and prepare the people for when this all would take place, for when the Messiah was going to come and take on this mantle of leadership. And so John the Baptist came. He came and he baptized, and his emphasis was a baptism of repentance. Now, when we think of repentance, we, we think of turning away from sin, and that very much is what repentance is, turning away from sin and focusing on God. Now, 
everybody sins. I, I, I understand that. But there are some good people out there who do, do wonderful things for the, for the community, for their neighbors, for their families, for their, um, for their work. But they don't know God. And repentance can also be thought of as a turning toward God and getting for a deeper, more fulfilling um, relationship with him, a spirit-filled relationship with him. And so John's baptism emphasized being washed of your sins, being forgiven of your sins, and it was all to prepare yourself, themselves, for the earth-shattering message that the Messiah was going to bring when he started preaching. In short, John tried to prepare the people's hearts so that they would respond to the Messiah when he finally came. John and God's goal was for the people to have a new heart and a new spirit within them. The only problem is, is that John knew that his baptism of water could not bring that about. It could not bring a new heart and new spirit. The only thing that was going to bring that about was when the, when the, the Messiah came and gave them the baptism of the Holy Spirit and it was through that Holy Spirit who will change your heart, give you a new spirit, um, and, and, and a focus on who God is. We know that that baptism of the Spirit came later on, on the day of ben Pentecost. But at this point, for the disciples, they hadn't experienced that yet. You know, it's interesting to see that John the Baptist is calling all of Israel to be baptized. John's call for the whole nation to be baptized implies that the whole nation was defiled and it needed cleansing. And it did. I mean, it, they did. They, they turned away from God. And so John is pointing people to Jesus, the one who was more powerful than he was. So the whole idea in this Mark passage of being prepared was to prepare themselves, prepare their hearts and their minds so that they would be receptive to the radically new teachings that the Messiah would preach. So, that brings us back to the question then. Does our way of preparing for the Lord come anywhere close to the biblical idea of preparing the way for the Lord? Let's remember what we did. In, in Isaiah, preparation was a, was a preparation for God himself as he demonstrated his power and his might and his sovereignty when he brought his people back to the holy city of Jerusalem. The people were to prepare the way for God and, and let him take his rightful place. And the, all the people had to do was follow and obey what God had laid out for them. Mark's preparation was a preparation for the heart through repentance in order that they would be receptive to the good news of Jesus. The people were to repent of their sins and be baptized, thereby cleansing themselves of any impurity or sin in their lives and preparing themselves for the good news that the Messiah would bring. Those two preparations from the Bible, Isaiah and Mark, seem to have a whole different focus than what we take as preparation in 2020. In 2020, we seem to focus our, our preparation on personal gain. We focus on receiving more, more presents, on eating, on, on making the necessary visits to all the different people. Most of our activities seem to focus on personal enjoyment and contentment. But I don't think that's what Isaiah, <coughs> excuse me, Isaiah and Mark and John the Baptist or God had in mind. And if you agree with my viewpoint, then you, you, if you think our, our preparation in 2020 is a little bit skewed, then the question is, what should we do? First, let me say that I think that there is some overlap here between what we do and, and what the Bible says. We should prepare ourselves and follow God, our Heavenly Father, wherever he takes us, just as the Israelites did. And I think we should prepare our hearts and minds for the radically transforming good news that comes from Jesus, our Savior and Lord, and that John the Baptist was trying to prepare us for. 
But what I think has happened in the intervening 2020 years or so is that we have sort of allowed the hoopla of the season to get us sidetracked. Yes, we need to prepare ourselves. But John wasn't pointing, trying to point us to prepare the way for some baby born in Bethlehem so that we could get in the Christmas spirit. John the Baptist isn't leading us to the manger where angels sing and cattle low and shepherds bow and a little drummer boy plays his drum. John the Baptist is trying to point us to prepare the way for Jesus through repentance, by admitting our sins, by examining ourselves in light of the truth in the Bible, realizing that it's only through Jesus that we can be forgiven of our sins, that we have everlasting life with him. It's only through Jesus' life and death on the cross his defeat of sin and death and Satan and his resurrection three days later, that we can have any of that. And that's what John is pointing us to. In a sense, preparing the way for the Lord has been made quite plain in the Bible. In the Gospel of Mark alone, when it talks about the way, it, 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 there's several places in that Gospel where it talks about that. But the disciples back then, before the day of Pentecost, when they were within those three years with Jesus in his teachings, the disciples didn't get it. In fact, the disciples were often more in Jesus' way than they were preparing his way. Or they were trying to lead themselves instead of following Jesus. The disciples at that point didn't yet know about service. They didn't yet know about loving others. They, they didn't know about the total upside-down viewpoint of the heavenly kingdom as compared to the earthly kingdom. Now, eventually they did. After the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came on them, they got it, and they changed the world. But at this point, they didn't. And I'm afraid that sometimes, I think, we believers of today are a lot like those disciples. We want to be in charge. We don't want to admit or confess our sins. Instead, what we want to do is we want to compare. And we can always find someone who is, quote, quote, worse than us, so that what we do seems fine, and we can say, well, you know, God, I'm not so bad. Or what we do is we just sort of totally disregard the parts of the good news that are found in the Bible that we don't want to follow, and we just don't even mention those. You know, in my mind, I think it's quite clear what we believers or disciples or followers, whatever word you want to use, of Jesus need to be doing today. You know, Jesus is the one who is really preparing the way. It's not us. Anyone else who prepares the way would make a royal mess of it. Only Jesus can truly prepare our way. Jesus is the one who's out front blazing the trail. And you know, the thought of that, that that's a good Moravian point of view if you think about it. It reminds me of two things. One, the first one, it reminds me of an old Christmas hymn that we sang while, we served, while Judy and I served up in Labrador. And it's the hymn, Jesus Bids Us Shine. And what, what it was, it was a hymn back then, back or in Labrador, they had a service, it was called a Chris Stingle service. And it came from the English Moravian Church. It, they, they got an orange and there was a candle in the orange. And um, during the kids would get up front and they would sing this song. And, the, and I'm not going to offend you by trying to sing this, but I will say the words to it. it. It's, Jesus bids us shine with the clear, pure light, like a little candle burning in the light. Now, in your mind, think of these little kids with their candles, right? In this world of darkness, we must shine. You in your small corner and I in mine. Now, when I first heard that hymn, I got a little bit offended by that, you in your small corner, because my mind thought of, of punishment, like, you get in that corner and don't you move, right? 
But that's not what they're thinking about. They're thinking about that you are to shine your light in your corner of the world where you find yourself. And I will shine my light in my corner of the world where I find myself. And so because we're all shining our lights in the different corners of the world, the, the world will shine with Jesus' light. The other thing that came to my mind about Jesus blazing the trail for us was the whole symbolism that we have on Christmas Eve when we're singing our last hymn, Christ the Lord, the Lord most glorious, the last stanza, we raise our candles. And the symbolism is, is that Jesus is our light. And he lights our path. That he prepares our way. And all we need to do is obediently and faithfully and courageously follow him. And we can do that because he knows the way. He's already been there. He knows what he's doing. But while we're following him, Jesus bids us to shine our lights too so that the world will see what the kingdom of God is all about. You know, the biggest difficulty I think that we all have with Jesus blazing the trail and lighting our path, is that Jesus often leads us on paths that we don't want to travel on. His way is strenuous. His way is paved with suffering. And his way is totally different than what our culture and society lift up as successful. But his way is the one we need to travel on if we ever hope to get home. If we truly want to follow the way of the Lord, we need to realize that his way is to allow God to lead, like we learned in Isaiah. We need to realize that his way is to allow Jesus to be our example and be in him blaze the trail for us, as we found out in, in Mark. We need to realize that his way is the only way that will provide the purpose, the joy, and the peace for our lives. So go ahead and prepare for the seasons during these five or six last weeks of, of, of the year. And don't worry about messing up. You know, you, you won't get banished to hell if you eat a little more this season or if you enjoy each other's company or if you give and receive gifts or if you decorate for the season or if you watch all the holiday specials and movies on TV. But as you do those things, realize that those activities are not what preparing the way of the Lord is all about. Those activities can be fun. They, can, they, they might bring you joy. But there's no lasting eternal effect in any one of them. All those activities are not what Advent and Christmas are intended for. Now what I'm about to say could be taken as a heretical statement, but it's, it's, just, um, it's just an if. It's not reality, so play along with me, okay? If we took everything we know about how we celebrate and observe Advent and Christmas and took it all and put it in a garbage bag and threw it away, if we took everything in, and instead... We examined ourselves and repented of the sins that we commit on a regular basis. And we surrender our lives to Jesus as Savior and Lord of our lives. And if we would receive the forgiveness of our sins through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. If we did all of that, I think we would be much closer to what Christmas is all about. And we would be fulfilling the mandate to prepare the way of the Lord in our lives, and in the world. In short, we would be following God the Father and His Son Jesus, our Savior and Lord, as they intended us to follow Him. We would be following the truth that we find in the Bible. Let me close with a quote from a guy named John N. Oswald, and I think it kind of brings it all into perspective. He wrote these words. We need to live lives of faith that are shaped by the word of God, by its view of reality, and by the principles that emerge from it. 
If I cannot believe God and hope in Him in the sense of surrendering my life to Him in a kind of life that I know pleases Him, then His power cannot transform me. But if I actively believe His Word, there really are no limits to what He can do for me, for my family, and for my society. May we strive to live lives that are shaped by the truth of the Holy Word of God. And may we become agents for spreading the truth of that Word as we go and prepare the way of the Lord. Let's pray for a minute. Our dear Heavenly Father, just thank you. Lord, if left to our own devices, we humans just make a mess of things. And yet you are a loving God, a gracious God, a forgiving God. And time after time you reach out and you help us get straightened out again. Like you did with the Israelites, like you do with us each and every day like you did when you sent your son to earth to teach us, to show us, to give us an example, to die for us so that we, we might live. But Lord, even in the midst of your grace and your mercy, we, we still mess up and we get sidetracked. And Lord, one of the ways we get sidetracked is, is with this preparation of, of what Advent and Christmas and your son's birth really mean. Lord, this morning we've heard just a little bit about what it's all about. So Lord, yes, help us, let us, allow us to enjoy the things of this season. But also, Lord, help us to prepare ourselves by repenting, by focusing on your Son, in realizing that he is the one leading us. He is the one who prepares our hearts through the Holy Spirit. And once all that happens and we come to know him and surrender him to him, our lives, we are but to follow him. Let him be the light. Let him blaze the path. And let us faithfully follow. But in the same time, let our lights shine so that others might come to know him too. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do. Continue to bless us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn, like I said before, is, is it, it, it has that phrase, let every heart prepare him room. If we're preparing so much other stuff, we won't have room for Jesus in our heart. So let's stand, if you're able, as we, as we sing our closing hymn, Joy to the World.
now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us both now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.